Hi, Geekscapers. Oh. It's Tessa Markle and Carolina Alvarez from Femme Regard Podcast, part of the Geekscape Network. And we are here to talk to you today about Blue Velvet. It's the anniversary. So I'm a huge Lynch fanatic. Like I've seen everything he's done, like even every short film. And if you are a Lynch fan, you know that's like, oh, that's a lot of shit. So <laughs> out of his, you know, major feature length films, Blue Velvet is pretty well known, I think. At least if people haven't seen it, they've at least heard of it. Personally, it's actually not one of my favorite Lynch films. I don't dislike it. It's just, it's not one of my favorites. What but is one of your favorites? Well, I mean, Twin Peaks, but that's not a film. Film wise, I would say that's probably weird. Mulholland Drive, which is the first Lynch that's film I ever saw. My favorite. Love that one. Favorite and first Lynch film. Yes. I've ever seen. And Wild at Heart. Have you ever seen that? It's pretty cool too. Wild at Heart is a okay. lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, but this one, I mean, it's a modern noir, I would say. It's Ooh, I love. very strange, very Lynchian. <laughs> I've seen it a couple times, more than a couple times. <laughs> Carolina has not seen it. So. I have not. What are you expecting? Just from the trailer, which is what drew me to this film. Actually, no, I'll back it up. I think it was a Pinterest color board of some of the shots of the singer in her blue velvet dress. I was like, ooh, because we're also working on a feature film that will be a modern noir. So I was immediately drawn to the colors. So I'm seeing that kind of stark, contrasty, feel like there's a murder involved, but like it's a noir, so there's- It really is, the colors make you feel like okay. something suspicious is happening. <laughs> yeah, subconsciously, I'm like, okay, it's gonna be dark, yeah. but like Lynch dark, like I'm sure kind of abstract, and and then I'm just a little confused with the man finding an ear in the-, the Just wait, cause you're gonna be even more confused. <laughs> Oh my god, great! <laughs> I was like, oh, interesting. But it stuck with me. Like, I saw, I watched the trailer a year or two ago when I, like, first was working on our script, and that stuck with me. So those, yeah. the, the, the colors and the film, I feel like, won't well, disappoint. If anything, I'll be confused, but have lasting images. <laughs> Fair so, enough. So, yeah. So we're going to watch the film now, and we'll be back after to tell you what we thought. And now, our feature presentation. getting used to the world and yeah. and the style like it's very just absurd there's so many moments like I know you love the fireman in the beginning and the end like just cheesy corny weird moments but like I think that that builds that world that it's yeah. like the contrasting world yeah almost. yeah exactly because it's that very like 80s like John Hughes like everything's cool yeah. in a small town it's like <laughs> we're all happy whatever. we're all chilling but then it's got that like old school noir like what you, happens in the dark like, exactly like and the melodramatic of. acting and the, <laughs> and the over dramatic things that are happening and yeah you referenced to quite a few films while we were watching it that it like reminded you of yeah in the beginning of the first like sexual scene i was thinking about the graduate because like it's so awkward, awkward and like hard to watch <laughs> this like sex scene that you know it made me think a lot of older movies and you know this was made in 86 or was shown in 86 yeah. so they weren't re they weren't referenced in the 80s movies like that's just what it was then you know so it fit perfect into that world but I think they really were referencing the, the older old noirs. noir classics yeah because like the the acting was so dramatic too and like they would just propose love for each other or Jeffrey, like I love you <laughs> <laughs> It was just so good. I told Tessa I like kind of love that <laughs> the singer was kind of mediocre. <laughs> like, yeah, Isabella Rossellini 
not the best singer. And it's funny that they didn't just like use somebody else's voice, you know, that, yeah, they really just let but her be I wonder that, that if, But I wonder though, if she actually is maybe better, but they wanted, we discussed this too, like maybe a, like, this is a small town, like they're not gonna have Broadway here, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But I love that everyone's reactions was that dramatic, like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I like. Frank crying in the corner. Crying. crying. On his <laughs> oxygen drug. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is that? Oh, we looked it up. It's a drug that was popular in the disco scene. <laughs> Apparently that's what Dennis Hopper claimed it was. So Yeah. Something that's really fun about Lynch films, and I haven't seen a lot compared to this one, but he likes to put in little Easter eggs and like yeah. things for you to think about. So we were actually stuck on this weird thing hanging in Jeffrey's bedroom. Yeah, it looks like above hangs his above bed. his bed. Like, as he wakes up from the dream, he like puts his hand on the wall, Titanic style. And then <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, Titanic. And there's this weird and it's mouth. And hanging above it. It's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and I was like, I think it's a weird dream catcher kind of voodoo doll thing. If anybody's got answers, please. Please tell let us <laughs> know. But that's my interpretation is yeah. that it's like, a dream catcher because it kept yeah right after he had this nightmare and then they like the song that frank was obsessed with was like mr sandman and like he was like i'm gonna haunt your dreams at one point so i do think lynch has a thing for dreams and he definitely and has a thing for dreams he has brought isabella rosalini back to have a dream moment, which I'm not, I was, you, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, keep watching Lynch. Um, but yeah, it just, he loves dreams and he loves like small towns where dark shit's happening, yeah. which is clear for Twin Peaks came out, you know, four years later. So it, which yeah. is cool. I really, I do like that juxtaposition and it, it I do makes too. a really cool world. We can, in a way, if you've grown up in the suburbs, you can relate and understand the small town infatuation, especially if it's like a sleepy small town, mm -hmm. town, like not much is happening. And it just, you know, if you grow up in a childhood where you didn't have social media, it's easy to get sucked into it. I definitely bought it and I'm ready to watch some more. <laughs> We've got her hooked. Next on the list, Wild at Heart. <laughs> Bye guys. Yeah.